At a high level, it's important to understand that EU legislation is based on a directive which dates from the early 1990s. The key feature of a directive, as opposed to any other form of EU legislation, is that it gets implemented in the national law of each member state through domestic legislation. And when you've got so many countries implementing legislation from different legal traditions, uh, a load of subtle differences have emerged in the way the legislation has been implemented in each member state. And these subtle differences have become increasingly significant obstacles for businesses looking at using data on a pan-European or global business uh, because they've had to look at how the data is handled in each member state rather than in a simple way across the whole of the EU. So this coupled with a feeling that the EU was falling behind in the way it responded to the opportunities of e-business led to um, the Commission setting, around, setting about an initiative of creating a new legislative framework to take advantage of internet uh, business opportunities. In, in January 2012, the Commission published its proposal for updated legislation to deal with data privacy. Most significantly, it proposed that the legislation be implemented by way of a regulation which means that it will be one piece of legislation implemented directly in all the member states. So the problem of the subtle differences between legislation in different member states uh, was removed, or will be removed. The, the Commission's proposal was debated extensively by the European Parliament's Civil Justice, Liberties and Home Affairs Committee, which was chaired by a German Green MEP. Incredibly, there were about 5,000 amendments proposed to this piece of legislation, but ultimately, in the autumn of last year, uh, the committee reached an agreed position. And in, in, in March this year, the, the agreed position of the committee was adopted by the European Parliament uh, without amendment. Now, that is very significant because we have uh, European Parliament elections in May this year and uh, really the legislative clock goes back to, to start uh, when the new parliament uh, comes into effect in the, later in the summer. But because we've got an agreed position, there is at least uh, a starting point for further discussion uh, around uh, an agreed form of regulation. And the next stage of the process, which will probably begin in June, is a, uh, something called a trilogue, which is a discussion between the Commission, the Council and the European Parliament with a view to finalising the text of the regulation. And the original proposal that the um, text be finalised in 2014 might look a bit optimistic, but there is certainly great willpower to produce an agreed position and finalise the regulation later this year or early next year with a view to it coming into force two years thereafter. So we should have new legislation in 2016 or 2017 in Europe, which is actually not very far away considering the sort of changes this will bring about. I inevitably, with, with such a massive piece of legislation, there are going to be different views about what are the key elements, but my selection from the point of view of a cloud service operation would be as follows. First, I think it is quite significant that it's going to be implemented as a regulation rather than as a directive. So those subtle differences which people have had to think about when they've been operating pan-European businesses and thinking about using a cloud service provider will be removed. You will simply look at a single position and that will apply across Europe. You won't need to investigate whether you need to notify commissioners in different countries for different um, services. So I think the second important point is whereas the existing legislation looks at where the processing takes place and if it takes place in Europe then you're caught by EU personal data legislation. The reformed legislation will look at whether the processing affects EU citizens. So if you are collecting personal data about EU citizens and processing it in, say, the Netherlands Antilles, you will be caught by the new um, legislation. Whereas 
under the current system, if an individual decides to export personal data to the Netherlands Antilles and allow, and allow it to be processed there, then um, that's their business. It's not something that will then be regulated by EU privacy regulation. And clearly, um, that is a, a factor for cloud service providers who will be collecting data and processing it in many parts of the world in order to provide services to EU citizens. The third point I think is of significance is the, is the change in accountability. Under the current um, legislation, a great deal of emphasis is put on whether or not the individual has consented to processing of their personal data. And so this has led to slightly ludicrous situations where the privacy policies of some websites are even longer than Shakespeare's original version of Hamlet. It's hard to believe that individuals are really consenting in an informed way to the way their data is being processed. Under the regulation, the responsibility is shifted much more clearly to the data controllers and the data processors who have to carry out risk analysis to uh, establish that personal data will be processed safely and securely. And this is a sensible change, but one which is significant for businesses looking to use cloud services providers, and they will need to investigate and, and uh, be clear about the security measures that a cloud service provider operates. The fourth point of significance, um, which is likely to lead to a, a change in attitudes, is there will be direct liability for data processors in some situations. So, so the cloud service provider themselves might have direct liability under the new EU privacy legislation. At the moment, the focus of liability, as far as the legislation is concerned, is on the data controller, who has an obligation to back off their um, legal obligations under the legislation in the contractual arrangements with um, the data processor. Now, with the prospect of the data processor having uh, direct liability under the legislation, I think you can be jolly sure that the data processors are going to be asking uh, for much greater clarity about the scope of their obligations and the particular um, security measures there to put in place. Because actually, if they're processing data outside the scope of their instructions, they will be seen as data controllers and have direct liability under the legislation. So the final point that I think is of significance is probably one that's had the most publicity or the two parts of it have had the most publicity. First is the idea that there will be uh, data breach notification liability for the first time in EU privacy legislation. So we are going to have something like the US obligation to notify um, data breaches to data subjects and, and that's likely to lead to greater scrutiny of uh, security measures by senior management. The recent issue with the target senior management resigning because of uh, data breaches is not going to be lost on senior management in, in equivalent UK or other European businesses. So, so that change is likely to lead to an increased focus on uh, the activities of cloud service providers by businesses looking to use them in, in Europe. And then the issue which has perhaps received the most attention is the idea that the financial sanctions for breach of privacy legislation will be much more significant. At the moment in the UK, the, the highest sanction, financial sanction for a privacy breach is, is half a million pounds. Well, under the proposed uh, agreed position um, from coming out of the European Parliament, the maximum potential fine is 5% of worldwide turnover. Our information is that that kind of sanction is unlikely to, to withstand the trilogue process and, and the level of fine, maximum fine is likely to come down. But still, we're moving much more into the antitrust area for privacy breaches and, and, and this increased fine is likely to lead to greater uh, focus on standards being used by cloud service providers in the handling of personal data. Well, Safe Harbour is, is an important part of the armoury of any business which is moving personal data from Europe to the US because it's possible for US uh, recipient businesses to go into the Department of Commerce Safe Harbour for uh, personal data and when it does that,
then the exporting EU businesses are um, safe and not open to criticism under EU legislation for passing the personal data to the US business in safe harbour. Safe harbour is a concept which will survive in uh, the regulation. Um, there's obviously been a huge amount of noise over the last year, um, largely as a result of the disclosures of, of Edward Snowden about PRISM, about the basis on which personal data is passed to um, the states. And indeed, there is a, a case going on in the Irish courts at the moment um, where uh, there is a challenge to Facebook's exporting of personal data to the states on the basis that it's being exposed to the NSA. But the real issue is what is the European Commission saying? And the European Commission is basically saying safe harbour is and remains an important tool in the movement of personal data to the states. It's asking the Department of Commerce to make some small changes to um, the safe harbour arrangement, but it's not saying safe harbour should be abolished. And there's no real prospect of individual countries pulling out of the safe harbour uh, regime. So, so I think safe harbour will be secure for the future. But perhaps the most interesting um, development over the last few weeks has been the fact that the Commission and Microsoft have managed to reach an agreement over uh, standard contractual terms which will be part of the uh, Microsoft Online Services Enrolment Agreement. So this will operate like the current uh, EU model terms which allow um, parties which have executed these model terms to export personal data to countries all over the world irrespective of whether or not they have an adequate data protection regime and not just to the United States which is the issue with um, safe harbour. So this is a significant development and I expect that other um, cloud service providers or at least tier one cloud service providers are going to be looking carefully at um, the terms which have been agreed between Microsoft and the Commission and be adopting similar approaches themselves. And the advantage of this is that cloud uh, users will have greater certainty about uh, compliance with EU privacy standards when they use that particular supplier. Um, there'll be clarity about uh, exporting personal data to a variety of countries and it seems from the announcement that some of the difficulties that the current use of EU model terms in these situations uh, has will be removed because the announcement from the Commission suggests that uh, it will no longer be quite so essential to check on an individual country by country basis whether or not for example your uh, EU model terms need to be notified to the Local Information Commissioner before um, you, you sign up to the services. So I think this is an indication of how seriously the Commission is, is uh, looking at the possibilities that cloud services provide and creating certainty for businesses operating in Europe to use and take advantage of the economies that cloud services will provide and is a, is a real boost to, to the whole use of cloud by European businesses. Mm -hmm.